are you? Hey! What are you, deaf? That's a dumb thing to say. Well, it's dumb to hear somebody say something and not say anything back. Yeah, so? So who are you? Why is that your business? This is my wood. Well, it is not! It is too. It belongs to my house and the people who live in that house over there. I live in that house, dummy. Oh, neat! So we're neighbors then? Yeah. My dad says that a mean old lady lives in that house. It's cool to have another kid here. That lady is my grandma, and she's not mean, she just has osteoporosis. <laughs> What's that? It means her bones are weak, so sometimes they break easier, and she yells because it hurts. Oh, sorry. It's fine. I'm Jill. Becca. <laughs> what are you doing anyway? Getting wood for our fireplace. That's what I'm doing. You must not have any brothers if your dad makes you get the wood. <laughs> my dad's dead. Okay, so your mom makes you get the wood? No, my mom doesn't know that I come out here. She thinks the wood lives in our backyard. <laughs> your mom must not get out much. Nah, she doesn't like to go outside because she thinks she'll get dirty. She doesn't sound like much fun. She's not. <laughs> Wait, so you're getting the wood because you like to? Yeah, I like to get my hands dirty. It's fun. You have a weird idea of fun. Mm -hmm. My dad makes me come out here and do chores every day after school, and I hate it. Well, what do you have better to do? Coloring? I like to draw. Coloring is for girls. It's not! I did too! Boys are supposed to want to get dirty and run around and go hunting. Gross. <laughs> they hate hunting. It's so mean to the animals. Well, I think hunting is fun. You get to see all their guts go like... <laughs> that is not how it works. Well, how would you know? You said you had hunting. Well, my dad still makes me go, like, all the time. Well, you think your dad gets to be with something? You should just go instead of me. He says I'm a bad hunting partner because I never shoot anything. Okay, then you can go hang out with my mom. You're different. Well, you're weird. That's the same thing. So then I guess we're both weird? I guess so. That means we could be friends. We could be friends any way you wish. I know, but we could be special friends, weirdo friends. <laughs> if you say so. No. Why not? My dad says this is man's work. Your dad's not stupid. That's not nice, Becca. Well, is he stupid? Yeah, kind of, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> then it wasn't me. It was just telling the truth. Well, I should probably get home. Aw. OK. Well, I'm glad to have another friend. Oh, gross, 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 gross. <laughs> Don't be such a girl. <laughs> OK, bye. Just because you're a stick in the mud and don't want to go. Wait, what do you mean you don't want to go? 
It's just not my thing. Rebecca, there is not a single girl on this planet who doesn't enjoy the homecoming dance. It's a rite of passage for a young lady. I just don't want to go. Rebecca, that's so silly. The dresses, the corsages, the music, the boys. It's magical why we do not want to go. There's still time to buy a dress, honey. Mm, and Theo's job says he'll drive us, but drop it to the end of the block so we can walk him by ourselves and still look cool. You can totally ride with us. We can finally do something about that rat's nest of yours. Can you guys please shut up? Rebecca, language. Sorry. It's just, I said I don't want to go. Why can't we just drop it? We can drop it once you give us a real reason why you don't want to go. Nobody asked me, okay? Now can we finally talk about something else? I'm sorry, Beck. Oh, you can still come with Theo and me. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. I'm not third wheeling to the school dance if he is. Wait! Becca, have you thought about going with Gil? Gil? Ugh, gross. Oh, come on, he's practically in love with you. You guys are literally joined at the hip. We are not. We're best friends. We definitely like you as more than just a friend. You're crazy. I think that's a very accurate insight, Isabella. Mom! What? I think that Gil boy likes you very much, Rebecca. He's always such a gentleman when you have him over for dinner. I bet he'd love to take you to the dance. Gil and I aren't like that, though. I just, I, I don't think he sees me that way. Maybe he wants to see you like that, but you're just too afraid to let him? Even if that were true, I mean, what would I even do? Gil and I have had the same relationship our entire lives. I, I can't just suddenly go all girly on him now and totally freak him out. So don't, just ask him if he wants to go. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Theo literally asked me to Perkins last week after the game. Well, really, he should be the one asking you. <laughs> if Gil wants to go to the dance, he can say yes when I ask him. Very well. I suppose it's better than not going to the dance at all. That's the spirit. Mr. Mills said that if I didn't get my act together by the next math test, I would need to retake Algebra 1 in summer school. That's a little far off, isn't it? No, Bex. You told me I was failing. Gil, you need to relax. We've only had, like, two tests. It's easy for you to say. I've gotten A's on the last two tests. How much do you study anyway? I stayed up until midnight last week, and I did even worse than before. I don't study. Now you're just bragging. No, I'm not. It's just easy. I mean, once you know how to do it, it takes, like, five minutes. Everything always just comes so easily to you. It's just math, Gil. It's not that impressive. Why won't you ever just let me be nice to you? <laughs> Why? You know I love it when we fight. It's fun. <laughs> yeah, but it's also nice to just sit and be together, talk about our problems. I don't have any problems. Everybody has problems, Bex. I guess. I feel like there's something you're not telling me. What do you mean? Come on, Bex. I can tell when something's off with you. You know me so well, you would have asked me already. Asked you what? What do you think, Dumbo? I don't know, Bex. How should I know? God, you're such an idiot sometimes. What is the one question every girl in school has been asked this week, except for me? You want to go to the dance? <laughs> yes! All right, then, let's go. Well, weren't you going to ask me? I just did, and you said yes. <laughs> well, I thought you were asking me what you thought I wanted to be asked. My head hurts. <laughs> so you do want to go to the dance with me? Of course. <laughs> Why didn't you ask me? I didn't want to weird you out. You know how everybody at school's been with this thing lately? They've all been acting kind of crazy. Tell me about it. Izzy won't shut up about that stupid dress her mom bought her last weekend. But seriously, so dumb. You just go to the school for like two hours, bring some shitty punch, and then go home. And everyone's acting like it's supposed to be the most romantic night of our lives. What? And giving these grand gesture proposals, like what, are we getting married or something? Yeah. What? No. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> Rebecca Nora Press, with this leaf do you take me to be your homecoming date? To have and to hold as long as we both shall live? Yes, my girl, my darling, I do. Oh, my darling! <laughs> Thanks, Gil. Of course. You're my best friend. Uh, okay, get out. <laughs> what? Why? Because that was the dumbest plot you've ever made.
Are you almost done? Almost. Give me a minute. Come on, man. Why do you have to be so slow? Jill, dude, I haven't done this before. Here, just let me do it. God, <laughs> freshmen are so immature. You're a sophomore. Well, I can change at that time, like you could grow some tits. Knock it off, Madison. I think it's your turn to go for Truth or Dare. Oh, okay. Um, Mason, Truth or Dare? Truth. Okay. Um, have you ever kissed Madison with tongue? Duh. What kind of question is that? What are we, Mormon or some shit? I don't know. You're such a dweeb. You still got that bottle from earlier, Theo? Yeah, but you gotta promise to stop being such a bitch to everyone. <laughs> Theo, you drink? Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Sometimes. Don't try to be tough for your girl. He had his first shot before the dance. <laughs> Wait, why? Was I. Did you not actually want to go to the dance with me? Is he? No. I was just nervous. I just thought you had more game than Miss Goody Goody over there. Now, all of us are obsessed with sex, Mads. Wait, what were you nervous about? I was nervous about everything the dance, buying the right flowers, but mostly. Getting to go out with you. Oh, I don't think I've ever had anyone scared to go out with me before. That's so sweet. Oh my god, give me that. <laughs> I'll take some more when you're done. Izzy, you want something? Oh, no, thanks. I think I'm good. Don't be such a baby. What, you never had a drink before? Lay off, Madison. She's happy she doesn't want to. Whatever. Her loss. Well, my mom says that vodka tastes like nail polish remover and wine is for communion and book club. <laughs> <laughs> it does taste like that, but it's worth it. What do you mean? It's not about what it tastes like, it's how it makes you feel. Like you've got a blanket on inside of you. Find out for yourself. All right, hoes, I'm bored. Well, let's change the game up. From now on, there's only two options. Instead of truth or dare, there's dare. Or double dare. <laughs> I like the other way we were playing. Same. I guess I'm just old-fashioned like that. Me too. Snooze fast. Who's with me? I'm always with you, baby. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think we're going to get a choice either way. Nope. So, Izzy, dare or double dare? Uh, dare, I guess? I think you know what I'm going to say. Izzy, you don't have to do that. I don't know, it could be fun. You okay? That was kind of fun. Well, nothing like my mom said would happen. She always says that if you drink before you're 21, your cheeks will blow off like a puffer fish and you'll have to go to the hospital. Just kidding. But I didn't see anything like that happening to you guys, so I figured it was probably okay. But it was still like. Jesus Christ, Izzy. Dare or double dare? Well, I just did my She's not asking you, babe. It's your turn to ask. Oh, again? Okay. Um, Mason, again. Double dare. What are you gonna make me do? Prank call Domino? No, I double dare you to kiss Madison with tongue. Okay. <laughs> Done. <laughs> oh, okay. It's fifteen thirteen, guys. <sighs> Still boring. <laughs> dare. Or double dare. True. That's not the rules. It's the rules I'm playing with. Either ask me a truth or ask someone else. You're such a prude. Fine. Who was your first kiss? I haven't had my first kiss. No way. I know you've had sex at least once, let alone a stupid kiss. You don't know shit. Relax, dude. You've got such a stick up your ass, no one's interested <laughs> anyway. Say something about that again, I'll not do that. See what I mean? Bullshit little Becca Press hasn't had her first kiss. She's waiting until marriage, so her mother approves. <laughs> That's it. I can break you in half. I don't think you want to see Tom. Wow, Becca, maybe if you weren't so mean all the time, a boy might actually look at you. <laughs> Shut up, Madison. I'm a boy. I look at Becca every day, and I still haven't had my first kiss. <laughs> you haven't? No? That's surprising. I haven't had mine either. That's not surprising. Hey! <laughs> Here's an idea. What if we stop calling people out and making them feel shitty? And 
place in the bottle instead. Ooh, that sounds like real fun. Oh my gosh, yes! I've been wanting to have my first kiss forever now. I always imagined there'd be candlelight and a bed of roses and a blanket and stars. <laughs> At least there are stars. <laughs> okay, sure. No way. I knew you were too big of a goody goody. I want to play a game that involves making out girls and there's a boy who just six inches away who will gladly stick his tongue down my throat. All right, fine. Change of plan. Since we're basically in the middle of God's closet anyways, why don't we play Seven Minutes in Heaven? <laughs> What's that? We each go to different parts of the woods and play tonsil hockey, and whoever makes it the furthest wins. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> We go be alone with our dates for a while and enjoy the romantic atmosphere. Oh my gosh, this might be more like my dream first kiss than I thought. I'll go pick us a spot. Shane, I'm looking forward to playing with you. You were? Yeah. I've seen your sketches around school. They're really good. And they say artists are the best kissers. <laughs> so. sometimes, but that's it. Really? Yeah. The idea of kissing anyone, it just doesn't, I mean, even you, it just doesn't excite me, I guess. Bex? Yeah? Can I tell you a secret? Obviously, Gumbo. I don't really want to kiss any girls. Shut up! No, I mean, when I think about girls, I just want to do the same shit as you, you know, camping, talking, Nerf gun fights. What is this? Normal? What if we ever cared about being normal? Never, I guess. So basically, we just want a relationship, but without all the romantic stuff. Yeah. So then, are we dating? I mean, <laughs> no. But to everyone else, it looks like we're dating. So, we could basically not, and we did. We definitely get everybody off our backs about all this hookup crap. Ugh. Madison would finally shut her stupid mouth. And oh my god, my mom, oh, she might finally get off my back. Well, then it sounds like we've got a plan. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Rebecca Nora Press, <laughs> would you once again take my hand and do me the honor of becoming my fake girlfriend? Yes, dear, I would love to be your fake girlfriend. Good. Wait, so what do I tell the guys when they ask about seven minutes in heaven? That we won. Season, son. Still got a few weeks left to go, don't we? Well, sure, but this is the last one we can fit in the freezer and still be able to shut the door. <laughs> oh, yeah. 
Hey, Mom. Hello, Rebecca. How was work? It was fine. Just fine. Same as when you asked me yesterday, Mom. Same as when you ask me every day. Well, I'm sorry. I just want to be involved in my daughter's life. Oh, okay, do you always have to be so dramatic? You know, all those years of shooting, you'd think you'd be used to it by now. How are you going to get food for us when I can't do it anymore? I'll go to Coburn's. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that bullshit right here and right now, son. You know the butcher up charges. Yeah, I know. <clears throat> Your last year of being a child, son. You need to start focusing on being a man. I am a man. There are just certain things a boy needs to know how to do before he leaves high school. You know, and one of those things is learning how to shoot a guaranteed shot each time he goes out hunting. <laughs> Should never go home empty handed. Whatever you say, Dad. I just want to know what's going on with you. It feels like I never see you anymore, ever since you got that job. Okay, can you please stop saying it like that? I'm just surprised someone is willing to pay you to haul around wood for three hours every day. Yeah, God forbid we have lumber so we can build houses and buildings. Yes, houses and buildings are important. I just don't think you're the one who needs to build them. Jesus Christ, Mom, what do you think I do? I'm not a construction worker, I literally organize the wood. Language. Yeah. I know. It's just some extra money, Mom. Yes, uh, speaking of which, we need to discuss that. Can you sit for a minute? Uh, there are a lot of responsibilities you need to learn about before taking over the mill next year. Next year? What? You heard me? Dad, you want me to take over the mill next year? You're graduating high school and all? It's time for you to start thinking about your future. You'll start as as just a partner, of course, but then within the next two years, you'll have full control. Well, what do you think, son? I don't know what to say. I just didn't think it would be so soon. Well, I can't think of a better time. Like your grades aren't quite good enough to get you into a fancy college or anything like that. I mean, don't get me wrong. You can you know, certainly go to community college if you'd like, but you don't need it. Drains more money than it makes, if you ask me. Look, Dad, I know we talked about this, but I didn't think we would just go for it. I've been talking to Mrs. Arlen. She says there are scholarships for kids like me. You know, guys who maybe don't get the best grades, but have talent. Talent? What kind of talent do you have? Certainly not shooting. No, but I'm an artist. Mom, I really don't have time for this right now. I've got to be a kill soon. Please sit, Rebecca, just for a minute. Jesus Christ, Mom. Becca, I go by Becca. I've been going by Becca for forever now. Can you please respect my name? Rebecca, you know how I feel about you using the Lord's name in vain. <laughs> I mean, I certainly think drawing is a fine hobby, son. You know, if you're not afraid of looking like a pansy, it's definitely not a real career. Dad, we've been over this. Lots of people are professional artists. That's why we have museums. I know, son, but it's not like you're the next Picaccio or <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Been to the parent-teacher conferences. Mrs. Arlen's been saying every semester to you since freshman year, ever since she hung up the sketches of the Fauché Tower in the hallway, she says, I have the potential to be a real artist, remember? One whose work actually gets hung in museums. I know, son, but, you know, potential and practice are two different things. But potential just means that you could do something. It doesn't mean that you will. It also doesn't mean I shouldn't try. And you can try. On your days off from the mill. I want more than that. As long as you are living under my roof, eating my food, I will address you however I see fit. Mom, please, I really can't do this right now. Then please, at least take these and take a look at them. What the hell are these? Stop it, Rebecca. I'm not going to remind you again. These are the first steps to making your dreams come true. Uh, look, I've given you a nice house. No food every night, the clothes on your back. You know, I had an entire goddamn successful business. What else do you want? I just need to find that all for myself, Beth. Find my own house, my own food, go to the store and buy my own clothes. I want to see the world. I'm good at something. I owe it to myself. Uh, what is it with all you millennials or whatever trying to find yourselves? You know, when I was your age, we didn't do shit like that. You know, we had the clothes on our back, the food on the table, you know, and the job we go to all day, every day. And that was that. It's not the 80s anymore, Dad. We have opportunities now that you weren't lucky enough to have. No son of mine is going to be an artist. You can't stop me from trying. I can't. 
but I'll tell you what, boy. I mean it when I say that no son of mine is going to be an artist. Right. All right, I get it. What dreams? An accountant? A lawyer? A real estate agent? Uh, Every lady this day and age has the right to a good college education. I don't know what my dreams are, but college definitely isn't one of them. Don't be silly, Rebecca. Of course it is. This is coming from the woman who thinks there's no purpose for lumber mills. I never said that. I don't want to go to college, Mom. Uh, what about that girl of yours? Dad, you've known Becca for 10 years. You can use her name. All right. What about that Becca? What about her? What's she doing after high school? I don't know. We haven't really talked about it. Now, Becca, she's a smart girl. There's a reason she's the first girl I get a job to at the mill. This isn't negotiable, Rebecca. You can't make me apply for college. Well, you certainly won't be allowed to be some sort of unemployed bum on my couch after you graduate. Just what do you intend to do? I don't know. I don't graduate until May. It's November. I've been in school for forever. I just want to take a break for a little bit and then figure out what I want to do. That's wonderful. That's exactly what university is made for. I'm not going to a university. I can't force you to go. But I'm not letting you live here without a job. I have a job. A real job, Rebecca. I didn't have the opportunity to go to college. Do you know how lucky you are? They had college in the 80s, Mom. Izzy's mom went to Brown. That wasn't an option in our family. When I was your age, my father said I either had to get married or get a job. So I'm giving you the same option. You will go to college so you can get a sensible job and support yourself, or you can get married and get your place of your own and start the life you want that I can't control. She knows her stuff. And if she's not doing anything after, after high school, she'll make a great meal wife. I think she'd rather run it, run it herself. <laughs> That's just silly. You know, sure, she can sort the lumber just fine, but sorting all the men? <laughs> That's something else entirely. She could run a mill just fine, Dad. I don't know if you're sass for one day. Give me another beer. What is it, the 16th century? What's my dowry, Mom? Two goats and a pig? Oh, or am I with a cow, too? I'm giving you what's fair. You said it yourself. You're almost 18. You need to start building an adult life for yourself. How is this fair? Marry me off to some boy like I'm some child bride? I didn't realize you thought so little of your boyfriend. You leave Gil out of this! You're almost 18, Rebecca. You're certainly no child bride. I think you should get a degree and wait for marriage. If you can find an alternative, fine. But I hardly think your little lumber mill job pays enough for you to get your own apartment after high school. I'm offering to pay for your entire college education. It is just idiotic to turn that away, Rebecca. Then I guess I'm an idiot. night at the bonfire freshman year, I was so sure you were straight. I wouldn't stop flirting with you. You also wouldn't stop insisting that you were going to give Izzy your first kiss. <laughs> oh, don't worry. I delivered. I mean, if I didn't, who would? Don't be mean. I'm not. She's hot, just a little over-enthusiastic. But how else was I supposed to know that you were into me? I don't know. Maybe the fact that I started coming here to study with you forever ago, but we never actually do any studying. Becca and I do that literally all the time. Don't you think it's about time Becca knew? About us? Well, that would depend, Theo. What about us? What do you mean? 
We've been doing this for a long time, and I don't know what to call you. It's Thea. <laughs> Smart ass. Hi, Becca. Meet Theo, my afternoon rendezvous in the woods partner. <laughs> I don't know, Gil. I like you. I think you're more than just rendezvous partners. It's just, you could have any guy or girl that you want in the entire school. Hell, the entire town. So, why'd you pick me? It's different with you. We talk about things and you've become one of my best friends. You actually know me and I... I love you too, Theo. Wait, really? Yes, really! <laughs> You're the only one who knows the real me. I can always be myself around you, and you make me think of things in all kinds of ways that never even crossed my mind before. You just make me so happy. Does that answer your question? Are you my boyfriend? Well, it depends, really. I just told you that I love you. Is that not clear enough? Yes, but I'm not going to spend the rest of my life here meeting you in the woods. I wouldn't ask you to do that. But I understand that you coming out isn't really an option either. My dad will probably disown me anyway. What do you mean? He tried to talk to me about taking over the mill again yesterday, and I just mentioned wanting to go to design school, and he barked at me. No son of mine is going to be an artist. I'm sure he'll come around eventually. No, Theo, he really meant it. He said it twice, even. And there's something else. I told him that I might have a chance at getting a scholarship, but I didn't tell him that I actually got a scholarship. Wait, what? I applied early decision to Parsons, and I actually got in with a full ride. Gil! That's amazing! It still doesn't feel real. Have you told them yes yet? I drafted the email, I just don't know what to do after that. Wait, you're not thinking of saying no, are you? This is a fucking fantasy come true, but I'd also be sacrificing a lot. I mean. My dad won't want anything to do with me. Becca's going to be pissed because I'm pretty sure she thinks we're going to spend the rest of our lives here together. And on top of all of that, now I've got some guy who thinks he's in love with me. <laughs> well, do you really think that guy wants to spend the rest of his life here? You'd really come with me? Of course. I mean, even before you, I've been promising myself that I wouldn't get stuck here. We could actually be together there without hiding. So, back to your question. What about us? I think it would be safe to call you my boyfriend. I don't think I'd be used to that. Looks like you and Becca have a lot to talk about. Fuck! <laughs> right. I don't want to hurt her. I'm pretty sure if I tell her I'm moving to New York, it might actually break her. I think you and I both know that no man is capable of breaking Becca. And if she's really your best friend, she'll want you to follow your heart. What if she doesn't want to be my friend anymore? I think she's going to understand, Gil. At least eventually. She loves you. She's not going to throw away 10 years of friendship because you're following your heart. Plus, it's going to seem like our relationship came out of nowhere. I haven't even told her I'm gay yet. She'll understand. Isn't she ace? Becca telling me she might be asexual is a little different than me saying, I'm moving halfway across the country with a man. You don't have to compromise yourself for someone else. She may be upset, but it isn't your job to change yourself for her. Why do you always have to make so much sense? <laughs> I'm your boyfriend. It's my job. I like the sound of it. My boyfriend. It's good. Because I like hearing. Hearing what? 
Sorry. You must have heard me call you that at some point. How's your day? Shitty. How's yours? You must have had another conversation with your mom, huh? She can't force you to go to college, Bex. No, but she can blackmail me. Come on. What does the queen of the craft store know about blackmail? She says I either have to go to college or she's not going to let me live with her after graduation. Shit. Yeah. My mom said the only way I can keep living with her if I don't go to college is if I get engaged. Wait, what? Your mom wants you to get married? Yeah. I know, I know it's, it, it's definitely crazy and, and I know you're not actually my boyfriend, but it would get my mom off my back. Um, I mean, plus I, I kind of thought things were heading that way anyway, right? What do you mean things were heading that way? We're friends, Bex. Yeah, but are we the kind of friends who would get married at like 40 if we were both still single? Oh, well, there's something I need to tell you. Well, we could have a long engagement and like really take our time to make a wedding. Like, like not a shitty one, but like a beautiful one with like favorite flowers and shit. Becca, I need- We could also use old Farmer Dan's barn. I know they refurbished it a few years back for Tammy's wedding. Becca, we stop! I can't marry you! What? Why not? Because I'm seeing someone? What? Who the hell is it? Well? Theo? Theo? Yeah, Bex, because... Because I'm gay. I'm sorry, I know I should have told you sooner, I just didn't know how to say it. Bex, Bex, please say something. Okay. 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 I am upset with you. I get it. But I understand your dad isn't exactly a fan of the gays. <laughs> You? Yeah. You can't tell me, then who can you tell? Ah, uh, stop with that gay shit. <clears throat> mm. That's not very nice. Okay, well, this just means that you can keep seeing Theo in secret until he goes up for college in the fall and then we announce our engagement. Becca, I still can't marry you. What do you mean? I'm with Theo now. Yeah, but not like publicly. I mean, plus it's not like we can't see other people when we're together. We can even get a divorce down the line if you want. We're going public once we move to New York. You're moving to New York? Yeah, Bex, I can't stay here. What? <laughs> I'm here. Our, our families are here. There's something else I need to tell you. I applied early decision to Parsons Design School and I actually got in with a full scholarship. Where the fuck did this come from? You don't like to talk about stuff after graduation. I didn't want to stress you out. Why did you have to go all the way to New York? I just can't be myself here anymore, Bex. Not my real self. I need to get away from here. Far, far away. Why, you can always be yourself around me. <clears throat> being myself in the shadows isn't really being myself. You can come with me if you want. Our lives are here, Gil. Look. Bex, I'm glad that everything you think you'll ever need is right here, but it's just not enough for me right now. I mean, we're graduating from high school. Maybe your mom is right. If she's right, then why don't you marry me? She's not right about that. Jesus Christ, Becca, you're 18 years old. You shouldn't be getting married, and you sure as hell shouldn't be getting stuck here. You're smart. Everything comes so easily to you. You could be a doctor, or a lawyer, or a fucking tree surgeon, but whatever you do, you can do better than 
wasting away at my dad's lumber mill. You have your dreams, I have mine. Is that really your dream? Or do you just not know what you want? I just told you I, I don't know what I want, but, but this is working until I figure it out. Look, even if it does end up becoming your dream, my dad is an asshole, Bex. He's never going to let you move past a lumber sorter. Jesus fucking Christ, Gil. Can you ever be nice to your dad? Why? <laughs> what has he ever done for me? Oh, um, I don't know. Uh, feeds you, gives you a home, teaches you how to hunt. All the stuff my dad never got to do for me. Oh my god, I get it. You miss your dad, but it's been almost ten years. When are you going to move on? How have I managed to be friends with such a shitty person for this long? I've made some shitty choices, but that does not make me a shitty person. No. 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 Lying to me about applying for college makes you a shitty friend. Telling me to get over my dad's death makes you a piece of shit person. Yeah, well, I'd rather be a piece of shit than a coward hick who's too afraid to leave her trash-ass hometown. Get the fuck out, you, you fucking homo. Uh, fuck off, Rebecca. important from New York? How the hell are you getting mail from Parsons? How do you know what Parsons is? I know how to use Google. <laughs> now answer the question. I'm going to Parsons. Like hell you are. I got a full scholarship. It won't cost you anything. No. No? You heard me. No. Dad, you can't just say no. I'm accepting the scholarship and I'm moving to New York. College is more than tuition. Right, living in a city like that will cost more than it's worth. Are you glad I'm paying for living there? That the whole artist thing? It's something you can actually make a career out of. How will I know if I don't try? You'll know because I'll tell you you know. The mail is good, reliable work. This is something frilly and useless. Then it's my funeral. Your future is here. It's decided. You had it. I got a scholarship to do something I'm actually passionate about. Why can't you support this? Because it's a ridiculous fantasy that will never go anywhere. Working at the mill isn't going anywhere. This is moving to the artistic center of America and following my dreams. Dreams? Dreams didn't pay for this house. Or for those books or pencils or anything you have. No hard work at a reliable job paid for those things. But all that time you spent with your little girlfriend would have drilled that into your skull. She has nothing to do with this. Clearly. She should knock some sense into you. I'll make note of it. Good night. What is wrong with you? Why are you such an ungrateful fucking fancy? Honest, 
Right now, not so good. How'd you act like someone just died or something? Guess you haven't changed all that much. Welcome home. Thanks. The eulogy you gave for Buzz was really nice. Thank you. I'm sorry nobody asked you to speak. I know you and Buzz had not spoken in a while, so I wasn't sure if you'd want to say anything. A while like a decade, you mean? Sounds more dramatic when you say it like that. It's okay. Honestly, I don't know how I would have reacted if you had asked me. Things have been rough. I mean, even before Buzz died, I've really been struggling. I was doing well at Parsons at first, but then I got distracted by all of the chaos in New York, and I dropped the ball really fast and had to <coughs> drop out of school. I was doing freelance work for a couple of years. That kept me going for a while, but I wasn't finding much else. I was doing sidewalk sketches in Times Square when Theo called me about Buzz. Shit. Theo, come home. You've got an entirely empty house here. He left it to you. I've got my mom's old house. Did she move? No, she died three years ago. Oh my god. Sorry, Bex. It's okay. Haven't heard anyone call me that in such a long time. That's right. If we're not 18 anymore, you probably go by Rebecca now. You're not a very good best friend if you think I go by Rebecca. I guess I didn't realize you still considered me to be your best friend. The younger me did. You're still technically one of my best friends. And I'm sorry. It's OK. We weren't that close. He could have had me as his son, and he shut me out. That was his decision. No, I mean, I'm sorry about the fight we had. I'm sorry, too. I thought I knew everything there was to know about you back then. Do you really know everything there is to know about a person? Guess not. What have you been doing? Well, uh, I went to college and I actually really liked it. Uh, I went to St. Thomas, but it was just enough to get me out of here for a while. I got a business degree and ended up sticking around the cities. I didn't move back here until mom got sick. You didn't think about moving back after she died? I did, but by that point your dad really needed the extra help. Couldn't just leave him. Thanks for taking care of him. You're welcome. I mean, he was paying me decently and he gave me the job I always wanted, so it's not like I was doing it for nothing. You know, if you wanted to come back here, the house is yours. Doesn't it hurt you to be here every day, though? Not as much as it used to. I built my own home here. And just like when we were kids, it hurts a little less when you're here. Neither of us has reasons to be here. Neither of us has reasons not to be. You're here. That's a reason. Can we figure it out together? There's no one I'd rather figure it out with. Oh. 